Hey guys, welcome back to Mechanical PE Exam Prep. If you'd like to be notified when I post new videos, go ahead and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And if you want to get the basics down before solving lots of problems, take my Udemy course, HVAC and Refrigeration Fundamentals. In less than five hours, you'll review all the major topics you need for the PE exam. By the end, you'll actually be excited to start studying. So now that we've worked out the specific humidity of the air entering the cooling process, now we want to look at the specific humidity of the air leaving the cooling process. So that's this state three. And the thing to note here is that the cooling process is constant volume. So as we go from state two to state three, that's a constant volume process. And since we're willing to treat air and water as ideal gases, as we showed in the previous part, we're going to continue to do that. And we can use some of the properties of ideal gases to help us figure out how to better define state three. Right now, all we know about state three is the temperature and the humidity. And if we knew the pressure was atmospheric, we could say, hey, we know two things. This state is fully defined. But again, because we can't assume the pressure is atmospheric, we have no reason to believe it will be since it was very high pressure before and it went through this arbitrary cooling process to some temperature and humidity. We need to know the pressure at state three. So let's use this thermodynamic property that says P2 V2 over T2, right? Because normally it's PV equals NRT or MRT. So if there's no change in mass and there is no change in the gas constant, which there wouldn't be, then we can say that that equals a constant. So it equals some future state after the cooling process, P3 V3 over T3. And it's a constant volume process. So these volumes are going to drop out. And we know the pressure and temperature at 2 and we know the temperature at three. The only thing we don't know is the pressure at three, and we'd love to know that. So let's rearrange this to solve for the pressure at three. Pressure at three equals pressure at two times the ratio of the temperatures, T3 over T2. So now let's actually solve for P3. P2 was after the compression. It was 100 PSIA. And the process from two to three was a cooling process. At state three, the temperature was 75 degrees. But that's degrees Fahrenheit, and we have to use absolute temperatures when we're using these identities. So we'll add 460, and that becomes Rankin. And then at state 2, the temperature was much higher. It was 500 degrees Fahrenheit. And again, we'll add 460 to make that Rankin. So the Rankin cancels out, and we end up with PSIA. And that works out to 55.73 PSIA, which is multiple times atmospheric pressure. So it's a good thing we didn't assume it's atmospheric. So now what do we know about state three? We know three things. And I'm gonna do what I did before and use those three things to use the psychrometric calculator and get the answer first, and then we'll do it some manual way. So after we get an answer, we can check it against what the site calculator said. So let's restate what we know about state three. 75 degrees Fahrenheit, a relative humidity of 100% because it's saturated, and we just found the pressure to be 55.73 PSI. So based on those three facts, we can plug it in and get the humidity ratio, which is 0 0.00484 pounds of water per pound of dry air. And this tells us something important. This is much lower than the humidity ratio, uh, the answer from the previous part. At state two, it was 0 0.02 pounds of water per pound of dry air. Now it's 0 0.004. So the humidity ratio of three is less than the humidity ratio at two, that means that water has been removed. And I think that's useful to know because when we look at part A and they're asking how much water was supplied or removed, I'm a little worried about this being a constant volume process and we're using this thermodynamic property, assuming everything's an ideal gas. But what happens if you start adding or subtracting mass from a constant volume process? I am not sure if that property is gonna hold up but somehow I'm comforted by the fact that water is being removed because we're seeing that it starts out at a very high pressure and at that high pressure, air can't hold very much water vapor. So it doesn't take much water for it to be saturated. So as it cools, it's doing sensible cooling. It's gonna cool past its dew point and then that water vapor, a lot of it is gonna condense and come out and be removed from the process, which you could still imagine treating the constant volume cooling process as happening with ideal gases and, and that property holding up and you're just removing that liquid water as that cooling process happens. So I could buy that 
more easily than I could buy water being added and somehow that not affecting the process. It's a little hard to imagine. But regardless, let's look at a manual alternative now, very similar to what we did in the previous part, where we find the humidity ratio for state three without using a psychrometric calculator. So again, we're gonna to wanna to get the partial pressures. So let's say the total pressure equals the partial pressure of the air plus the partial pressure of the water vapor. And the humidity is the partial pressure of water vapor divided by P sat at the temperature, which in this case is 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, we know the relative humidity is 100%, so this ratio equals one. So that means then that the partial pressure of water vapor equals the saturation pressure at that temperature because the air is saturated. So let's again go to the steam table, app 23A, and find out what this value is. It is 0.4304 based on interpolating between 74 and 76. And that's PSIA. And then we can subtract that from the total pressure to get the partial pressure of air. Partial pressure of air equals total pressure is 55.73 minus 0 0.4304 equals 55.3. And then just to speed things along a bit, I'm gonna go back to this relationship here when we said that the humidity ratio equaled partial pressure times specific gas constant over the same thing. Again, the volumes and temperatures will cancel and we're gonna get algebraically back to this point, so I'll go directly there. So the humidity ratio for three equals the mass of water over the mass of air, which ends up being that fraction that we just looked at. Partial pressure of water times specific gas constant of air divided by partial pressure of air times specific gas constant of water. And now we're gonna use the pressures that we just found. 0.4304 times 5335. That's our numerator, and then our denominator is 55.3 and 85.78. And after all the units cancel, that works out to 0 0.00484 pounds of water per pound of dry air. And that is the answer to C. And that also lines up perfectly with what came out of the site calc. So again, I think the big takeaway from this part of the problem is that at high pressure, air can't hold much water vapor. So even though this air is completely saturated, the specific humidity is actually quite low because it's 55 PSI, which is nearly four times atmospheric pressure. So it just can't hold much water vapor at that high pressure. So if we had that intuition from the outset, we could have looked at this straight away and said, oh, there's no way water's gonna need to be added for this air to become saturated, it's definitely going to be removed because this sensible cooling is definitely going to cool past the dew point and we're going to see that condensation come out of the air.